Two of the points that you have specifically taken issue with Governor Ron DeSantis about uh, or Disney, which we'll get to next, but also a speech law in Florida that DeSantis supporters would say protects people from harassment on private property. But what is your issue with that law? Well, I think it's first thing I'll say is I think there are legitimate arguments for it. I disagree with those arguments, but I think we need to be able to have that policy debate in the open without taking it personally at the end of the day. I think that that's something that will make our party and our movement and our country stronger. It's part of the reason I show up, and it's a, it's a stylistic contrast between Governor DeSantis and myself. I said, I will talk to NBC News. I've gone on set with them multiple times. He says he won't talk to NBC News because they're not nice to him. And they're not nice to me either or, or others in the Republican field. But that's a philosophical difference about commitments to free speech. I believe character of free speech means we talk to everybody, even those who disagree with us. And so I think that stylistic contrast manifests itself in some policy contrasts as well. I am a free speech absolutist. I think the right answer to bad speech is not less speech. It is more speech. I think Governor DeSantis, through evidence through some of the policies that he signed, doesn't necessarily agree with that view. And that's OK. We're allowed to have disagreements. I think that makes our party stronger. What I think is regrettable, though, is if somebody takes that uh, as an ad hominem attack, it's not. It's a policy contrast. We need to be able to draw those. And so I think it reflects a, a difference in disposition and character and approach as well. Let's talk about the law itself. This was a law that basically criminalizes the distribution of leaflets of certain kinds onto private property. So in a certain sense, it relates to private property. It's not on its face, just a law that says you can or can't say certain things. That's true. However, it is still a hate speech law in effect. You could debate whether you like the hate speech law or not, but it's a hate speech law in effect because it means there are certain kinds of leaflets you can distribute on private property versus certain kinds of leaflets that you can't, depending on the content of those leaflets. Any law that draws a distinction based on the political content of what's on a piece of paper is by definition a hate speech law. So on Twitter, I, I posted something that said, I think I said something to the effect of, I, I disagree with the, I, I think I said, I respectfully disagree with the hate speech law signed into law by Ron DeSantis earlier this year. This was an affront to everyone affiliated with this campaign, it seemed. And I think that, I hope they grow out of that because over the course of the next year, if you're running for US president, as I am, as he is, we're going to have to be able to talk about legitimate policy differences in the open without resorting to ad hominem attacks as a way that you deal with legitimate policy contrasts. That's actually what makes our country stronger. And I think if you're going to sit across the table from Xi Jinping, you got to be able to sit across the table from your fellow opponents in Republican primary or from Chuck Todd at NBC, for that matter. That's what it actually means to be a leader of this country. You've questioned the sincerity of DeSantis's fight against Disney because of a 2021 piece of legislation that he signed in which language was inserted that was favorable to Disney specifically. But more broadly speaking, do you think that it was an appropriate use of the government to essentially punish Disney for its political speech? Uh, there are some conservatives, this, is a, this really splits conservatives, right? There are some that cheer this sort of somebody taking on these very left-leaning institutions and others who don't think that's an appropriate use of the government. So where do you fall on that line? Yeah, to be clear, I didn't question his sincerity. Mm -hmm. I did question his ability to be credible against criticisms when he himself was the purveyor of some of the crony capitalist privileges bestowed on Disney that he later railed against. So I think, I think, I believe he was genuinely mad at Disney and wanted to punish them. Mm -hmm. But I think it undermined his credibility in doing so when he was the person who, before he was mad at Disney, was showering them with corporate benefits. So the answer to your question is it depends. I think that on the face of it, there's a really legitimate argument for irrespective of anything Disney has said or done, saying that we don't want to be in the business of cronyism or crony capitalism, conferring special benefits onto companies because of their lobbying. I don't think Disney should enjoy some special self-governing status under a state law. I think that's an example of cronyism. It makes, harder, makes it harder for other upstart theme park manufacturers or producers or operators to actually compete against those state-endowed monopoly incumbents. However, I think that that argument falls flat if you were the very governor who signed into law 
some of those very special privileges that Disney enjoyed. And so as a matter of, on first principles, stripping away croniest privileges, I'm all in for it. I applaud that. I said so at the time. But I also think that that means that you couldn't correctly have also been the person who gave them some of those special protections that they uniquely enjoy as a company. And I believe in standing on the side of principle, calling that out for what it is.